Yo, what's up, everybody? How you doing? This is Renz. So, did you get your superpowers? Did you level up during the conjoining? Are you leveling up for this uh, winter solstice that is unlike any other? Did you look in the west and you saw the Christmas star? Yo, I want to welcome everybody here. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Uh, you know, please become a member of the YouTube page. We're going to have our uh, first YouTube YouTube uh, call on Zoom for members and those who support the channel on Patreon. So I appreciate you guys. But hit that at the least, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up icon. It helps grow the channel. The YouTube algorithm gets more of this information out to people. Share the video. So let's go. Let's get it. So everybody's all tripping. Some people just doing it for fun. Some people having a good time. Uh, just talking about this conjoining of Jupiter and Saturn. Well, what is that? What's going on? So basically, Jupiter and Saturn are like one knot north of each other, uh, distance-wise, like looking in the sky perception. Um, they're still like 400 million miles apart from each other, so it's not like they're like right up against each other. That would be that would be something. That would be something. Uh, but, so this happens like every so often, every 200, 800 years. Like this thing doesn't happen that often. But what's significant about this, what's really significant about it, is the fact that this is happening as kind of a harbinger to the coming of the next age. And that's what we're really going to talk about here. Jupiter is moving out of Pisces and into Aquarius. So when Jupiter, the king planet, the planet that represents expansion and growth, moves into the new age of Aquarius, and you have Saturn doing this conjoining, and Saturn represents stability and structure and uh, limitations, if you put it together, put it together, this is what, and this is what a astro true astrology does, is put it together. To put it together and say that what we are seeing, what we are ex about to experience, is a growth, an expansion, a change within a structure of the age of Aquarius, within the ideas, the, pro the, the, the thought process, the energy of the age of Aquarius. And every time that something like this happened, when we came into the new age of Pisces over 2,000 years ago, uh, and mind you, I'm saying over 2,000 years ago, we came into the age of Pisces, there was a turning point, a governmental turning point, a cultural turning point. Uh, we, the, the, the earth moved out, especially the northern hemisphere, moved out of the age of Aquarius, I mean, age of Aries, um, which was denoted, if you're a biblical, go by the Christian Bible and the, and the Hebrew Bible, then that was represented by Moses. This is why the Jews still blow the ram's horn, representing the age of Aries. But then we had the age of Pisces, which is represented by the fish, which you see in the teachings with the Jesus character. You see this with the with Krishna in this 13th iteration of him. You see the, the fish symbol became the symbol of the Western world which then became the dominant idea, the dominant government, the dominant military throughout the world over the last 2,000 years. That most of the world conforms to the Western world in one form or fashion. But this all happened over like a 200 year period of time. This is, this is why people say that it's just the time frame of Yeshua, but no, this happened over a 200 year time frame, a time frame of coming out of Greek domination into the Roman domination. And one of the earmarks of that change was how the Romans imprinted on the Western world the, the idea that technology and religion made you superior to everyone else you see the Greeks the Egyptians, the Sumerians the Hindus 
everybody else, when you look at their text, what you see is more unifying. Okay. Your Jesus, your Yeshua is similar to my soul Invictus. So in the actual writings of Constantine, he didn't say that he saw Jesus in the sky. He didn't say that he saw the that, that he saw that Je well not in the sky it was the cross in the sky he didn't say that he saw a vision of Jesus in his tent he said that he actually saw a vision of soul Invictus in his tent and when he was speaking with the bishops in the at the in Milan 13 years after the Battle of Moldovia he, at the Moldovian bridge he was he said specifically as recorded by his scribe Caesar um, Caesar um, <laughs> Caesar Ah, I'm saying his name right. Um, God dog, his name just fell out my head, y'all. It just fell out my head, um, but it's gonna come back. But his 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 advisor, his name starts with the E, of Caesar of Caesarea, uh, said that he said your Yeshua is like my soul Invictus. He drew a parallel, which is why even at his death he was still a worshiper of soul Invictus. But that's what the Greeks did. And they would say, well, Ishtar and Elnana, they are the same. They are similar enough, they are the same. Shango and Thor are the same. Both thunderers who are the sons of um, the Allfather, so to speak. So this idea, but the Romans began 300 years into the year the age of Pisces after 300 years and the next 100 years after it was if you do not conform to what we believe it, is, it was all Saturn based if you don't conform to what we believe if you don't be what we say you are then we're going to murder you when you look at slavery before the age of Pisces when it was in the age of Aquarius I mean age of Aries it was totally different Slaves had families, they made money, they lived in their own houses. Uh, to be a slave, yes, it was you were still a slave, but you weren't as downtrodden as the Trans-Sahara slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade, um, and any other forms of servitude that came about after the Romans took over religion in 325. It was all Saturn-based, and to this day, it's still Saturn-based. I can be minding my own business uh, and and start talking to someone who's Hindu and they will not try to force me and tell me how wrong I am. But yet if I speak to someone of the Abrahamics, then I'm told that I'm wrong and I'm going to Muslim hell or Jewish oblivion or uh, Christian hell. The Hindus say, hey, just do, be the best Hindu. You can be the best Christian you can be. Be the best Jew you can be. Be the best Buddhist you can be. You know, which is similar to my thought process. You know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Treat everyone kindly. Treat everyone you don't want to be stolen from, don't steal. You don't want to be murdered, don't murder. You know, do do that. Let's do that first. You don't want to be called out of your character, don't call other people out of their character. You don't want to be yelled at, don't yell at other people. You, you don't want poor customer service. Don't provide poor customer service. Treat other people exactly how you want to be treated. But we're moving into this age of Aquarius now. Jupiter is now moving to this age. Now, with that upheaval, the Romans, Vespasian became the new emperor. Things changed over the Roman Empire for the next 200 years with ushered in the true age of, Aqu of, of Pisces. So what we see in the skies and the heavens above and what amazes me is the people who, who will say that, oh, you're looking at astrology, you're, you're wrong, you're, you're, you're practicing demonology, you're, you're practicing witchcraft, and I ask them to look inside their own books, their own scripture, and I'm going to do another video later to, to, to explain to you why scripture is dead, that the essence, the life, the word of the creator is alive and is surrounding you and in everything that you see that life exists that that word exists not that those books don't have good wisdom in it it does they do they tell you how to live a better life for the most part but it also has some jacked up things in each one of them some things that cannot be lined up 
with the natural universal message that the creator has given us just by looking around you and inside you. If it says that the word of God was written on your heart, then why do you need a book? That's the next video. Maybe even a live. But for this one, you must understand that coming into this new age, there is a people, there's turmoil. Coming into this age of Aquarius, there's a mindset that will change, a universal mindset that will change. People will accept things differently. Where people who were just months and a year ago saying that, oh, you're talking about the stars. You're talking about alignment. Well, right now, these same people are looking up, talking about, oh, this conjoining is an alignment of energy. These same people are now talking about and naming this the Christmas star. Now, it would make more sense to say that this was the Christmas star because it was in the West. Because if three kings followed a star in the East from Persia, they would have went to Afghanistan and India instead of coming to Israel. So it would make more sense for this conjoining that was in the western sky to be the star of Christmas. That would make more sense. Because if you're coming from Persia, following a star in the west, you get to Israel. You can't follow it, a star in the east, from Persia, from Iraq, and get to Israel. It doesn't work. But if you look at the belt of Orion, or what I would say the belt, belt of a star and look at the three stars of that belt and how those three stars on Jan on December 25th will perfectly align with the womb of Isis the womb of a set and point directly to the rising of the sun on the winter solstice the birth of Horus Heru on December 25th but they were saying that I was practicing witchcraft I was being, I was, I was playing with demons, demonology. But yet, this is what they're saying now. This is a mind shift. Some will come slowly, some will come quickly, but it's a shift of the mind. You will not get superpowers. You will not all of a sudden be able to fly. You will not be like Arukin and balls of light come flying at your hand. These are things that will not happen. You will not all of a sudden be telekinetic and telekinesis and telepathic and everything else but what you will have is an opportunity to awaken to a new mindset to awaken to a new thought process to be able to manifest things on this physical plane that is allowable in the context of universal law you see some people think that they that that you can go outside of universal law on a physical plane to things that can only be done on a spiritual plane but you can't you exist on this physical plane right now and by existing on this physical plane, you are beholding to the laws of the physical world. Now, there are highs and lows to your abilities within these plane, this plane of existence. There are things you can do on the physical plane that is greater than most other people can do because you can utilize the laws in a far greater method than they can. The average person is right in the middle. The average person swings on the pole in the middle. There are those who go to the extreme right and those who go to the extreme left down to the elemental level of mind. But you can be greater. This is the age of Aquarius where you have the opportunity to swing further to the right, to swing to the higher end. And I believe that you can in this conjunction of Jupiter going into the age of Aquarius, which the age of Aquarius is the man pouring out a pitcher of water on the earth. This is the masculine pouring out the nurturing energy of the feminine water onto the physical plane of the earth. And if you can catch that energy, if you can get your mind right, if you can acknowledge and understand your dream state, you get into your meditation, start manifesting through utilizing the laws of the hermetic laws, you then will be able to perform what others may say is magic or manifestations beyond what the average person will be able to do. You will have the love in your life that you've been seeking. 
You will have the money in your life that you've been seeking. You will have the opportunities in your life that you've been seeking. You will have the health in your life that you've been seeking. You will have the peace in your life that you've been seeking when you understand how to vibrate in this age of Aquarius utilizing universal laws. I know you can do it. I believe in you. I know you have it within you. It's within all of us. We are all energetic beings created uh, at, a diff at, at a different level, but has made this journey into the body. And it is our duty to make this journey from the body back to the soul by utilizing the vibration of the spirit. It's there for you. I believe in you. I know you have it. I know, I know it's within you. And I look forward to exploring that with you. And I'd be more than happy to help you. Go to my page, coachrens.com, whether we are uh, reading your dreams or opening your chakras or working with you with Tantra, whatever it is that you need coaching for, I got you, I got you. But share this video, join the page, become a member. We're gonna have this on the full moon. We're gonna have this Zoom, com Zoom conversation. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be first one, get your questions answered directly, have direct communication with other people of like mind. And it's gonna be a beautiful thing and I look forward to it. So join this, this YouTube page, subscribe to the page, like, share, follow, and thank you for all the patrons as well. You guys will get this as well. Have a great day. Remember you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibration.